Hey Culture Crew and welcome back to another exciting edition of Culture Kids Storytime. Today's story is called Nelson Beats the Odds. And the author of this story, Ronnie Sidney, is the main character in the book. It really talks about his experiences growing up and how a lot of people doubted him and they didn't believe that he would be as successful as he is today and how he showed them wrong. So let's dive into the book and check it out. Nelson was off to a rocky start at Bland Middle School. Mrs. Granowski, Nelson's teacher, caught him playing with his friend Carlos during class. Mrs. Granowski asked Nelson to move his desk to the front of the class, then to the back of the class, then eventually outside of the class. No matter where Nelson moved his desk, he found someone to talk to. Nelson was in big, big trouble and all he could hear was his mother's yelling voice. I've had enough of you, your antics, young man. I'm going to call your parents. I sent you to school to learn, not play. Nelson would often become inattentive and disinterested in class. While Mrs. Granowski stood at the board, teaching Nelson's mind wandered outside of the school's walls into La La Land. Nelson sat and daydreamed about playing professional basketball with his buddy, Anthony. When Mrs. Granowski asked Nelson to read what was on the board, he couldn't see it. So his father took him to see an eye doctor. When Nelson came to school the next day, he left his glasses in his book bag. Where are your glasses? Oh, I forgot them at home. Nelson lied to Mrs. Granowski because he thought his classmates would tease him for wearing glasses. When Nelson went to hand in his work, Mrs. Granowski said, I can't read this chicken scratch and put a big fat red F on it. Nelson felt embarrassed in mumbles. Maybe you need to learn how to read then. The class erupted in laughter. Mrs. Granowski's face turned redder than a fire truck and she screamed, go to the office now. Mrs. Granowski set up a meeting with Nelson's parents the next day and told them, I suspect your son has ADHD, a learning disability. I would like to refer Nelson to our school psychologist to determine if he's eligible to receive special education services. Nelson's parents refused to put him on medication, but they thought that special education would help him reach his maximum ability. Fact. In 2011, more than 11% of children 4 through 17 years old have been diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, by a healthcare provider, Centers for Disease Control Prevention 2015. Quote, I was diagnosed with ADHD twice. I didn't believe the first doctor who told me and I had a whole theory that ADHD was just something they invented to make you pay for medicine. But then the second doctor told me I had it. Vance, 2012. Solange, American born recording artist, ADHD. There's nothing wrong with you, baby. You just need some extra help. It's not fair. I won't be in class with my friends and everyone will think I'm slow. <sighs> You're not slow. I've always told you that you were smart. Your dad and I just want the best for you and the school thinks this program will help. While Nelson was on the way to his special education class, Carlos asked, Hey Nelson, where are you going? Um, I'm, I'm going to the bathroom. Isn't the bathroom that way? I'm going to the other bathroom. See you later. Nelson sneaked to his special education class like a ninja. He didn't want anyone to know that he was in special ed because they would tease him. Although Nelson hated going to his special education classes, he really liked his teacher, Mrs. T. Welcome, Nelson. Fact, in 2011, the prevalence of children four through 17 years of age taking ADHD medication increased from 4.8% in 2007 to 6.1%. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 2015. Quote, not having early success on that one path messes with you. You get lumped in classes with kids with autism and Down syndrome, and you look around and say, okay, so this is where I'm at? Or you get put in a typical class and you say, all right, I'm obviously not like these kids either. So you're kind of nowhere. 
You're just different. The system is broken. If we can streamline a multi-billion dollar company, we should be able to help kids who struggle the way I did. Haskell, 2014. Channing Tatum, American-born actor, ADHD. Mrs. T was there for Nelson at a time when he felt really small and needed someone to help him feel really big. You can do it. Nelson began believing in himself and gained the confidence and skills he needed to push the boundaries to discover his potential and grow. I know. After three years of special education, Nelson's grades and organizational skills improved significantly. It was his last week in middle school and Ms. Johnson, the high school guidance counselor, came over to help students sign up for classes. Nelson and his best friends, Tamika and Carlos, signed up for the same classes and crossed their fingers hoping they would be in class together next year. I can't wait to get to high school and take my classes with my friends. A fresh start. On Nelson's first day at Bland High School, he was thrilled to be in class with Tamika and Carlos. But moments later, the loudspeaker sounded. Nelson was called out of class. His first thought was he was in trouble. Nelson was relieved that he wasn't in trouble, but looked suspiciously at Miss Johnson as she handed him a new schedule. Nelson was taken out of the classes with his friends and placed back in special education. Three special education classes. When Nelson got home, his mother saw him crying. What's wrong? Why did they put me back in special ed? You said I was smart. I hate school and I'm never going back. The next day, Nelson's parents met with Mrs. Johnson and said, my son came home crying yesterday and said you put him back in special education. We want our son out of those classes now. I'm so sorry, there must have been some mistake. I will take your son out of those classes immediately, but he will need to be placed in developmental algebra. After school, Nelson hung with his cousin, Jeremy. Bro, I'd hate to be in those stupid classes and start acting white like Tamika and Carlos. Nelson interrupted. You sound stupid. They aren't acting white. They're acting like they wanna to go to college and be successful. You don't understand, Jeremy. I need those classes to get into college. Note, the fear of being accused of acting white causes a social and psychological situation which diminishes black students' academic effort and thus leads to underachievement. Fordham and Agbu, 18, 1986, page 176. Jeremy nudged Nelson and replied, whatever man, I don't need to go to college because I'm going to the NFL. Nelson shook his head and said, Come on, man. Everyone knows that you can't make it into the NFL until you graduate high school and enroll in college. Oh, yeah? To college. Nelson was placed in Mr. Stevenson's developmental algebra class. Nelson became bored because the work was no longer challenging. Mr. Stevenson sure is a know-it-all. Splat. While Mr. Stevenson had his back turned, a spitball whizzed by his head and hit the board. Nelson, Jeremy, did either of you throw that spitball? No, uh, uh, no. Mr. Stevenson paused and shook his head. That's why neither of you are going to college. <gasps> Nelson and Jeremy looked at each other and gasped as if they've seen a ghost. They couldn't believe Mr. Stevenson would say such a thing. Nelson told himself that day that he would prove Mr. Stevenson wrong and go to college. Nelson graduated high school and decided to go to college to become a social worker. He wanted to help kids reach their full potential. Fact, African American and Hispanic students continue to be overrepresented in special education, have higher dropout rates, and are suspended and expelled at higher rates. Cortilia and Horowitz, 2014. Quote, my teachers thought I was lazy and not very clever and I got bored easily thinking of all the things I could do once I left school. I couldn't always follow what was going on. On one of my last days at school, the headmaster said I would either end up in prison or become a millionaire. That was quite a startling prediction, but in some respects, he was right on both accounts. Schwartz, 2012. Richard Branson, British-born businessman. 
dyslexia. Nelson didn't have the grades to get into many universities, so he took classes at a community college. Community college helped Nelson build the confidence and skills he needed to transfer into a university. In college, Nelson studied hard and graduated at the top of his class. When he walked across the stage to receive his university degree, he looked into the packed stands and saw his family, friends, and former teachers cheering for him. Nelson finally proved Mr. Stevenson wrong. He showed him and the world that he was smart and would succeed despite being placed in special education. I stand here today because some very special people believed in me. First, I would like to thank my mom and dad for never giving up on me and supporting my dream to become a social worker. I want to thank the teachers who saw my potential and invested in me. Mrs. T, thank you for your positive energy and encouraging words. You left a lasting impression on my life and helped make my success story happen. So this story talks about Nelson and it, it brings up a lot of good points. So a lot of black and brown children, so black Hispanic children are placed in special education classes. That's not always something that needs to happen. And so, you know, your parents have to be your advocate. And what that means is when they see something happening that they don't agree with, that they can speak to the teachers and the administration on your behalf so that you get the proper education that you deserve. So, you know, even though they recognized Nelson had issues in school and he was kind of struggling and he was having a hard time, he used that time in those classes to get better. So if you realize that you're struggling with something, you have to put in extra work. One area that was a little bit tough for me in school was math. So I would actually spend extra time after school with the teacher, ask them to go over geometry with me because I might not understand it or some advanced algebra problems that I used to have to do. And now I can do that stuff in my sleep and I'm helping my daughter do it. But like anything, you have to practice to get better. If you wanna be a basketball player, you have to practice to be better. If you wanna read better, you have to practice reading and do it every day so that you get better. If you want to increase your vocabulary, you have to read books and practice knowing what those words are. So anything worth having is gonna take some effort on your part. And that's what Nelson was able to show you in this story. You know, he had a tough time, but he didn't let that stop him from his goals of going to college and being a social worker, which was an amazing thing. We need black men and black women in those fields so that they can help black children because it's much easier for black children to relate to an adult that looks like them. Think about it this way. When you have a black teacher, or if you have a black teacher, how excited are you that you get to see somebody teach you that looks like you? It's an amazing feeling. So if you know that you've struggled with something throughout your life, maybe that's the career path you decide to take so that you can help the next generation be better. Whatever you choose to do, I wish you nothing but success. But remember, all things that are worth having take some effort. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much, guys. Join us next time for another Culture Kids Storytime.